Now, there's been a lot of interest in outcome-based measurement in the TV space. What's your sense of the state of play? Is, is this a set of solutions that are mature, mass market, good to go? Or are we still feeling our way towards something that really works and can be scaled up? Yeah, we're still very much feeling our way toward, toward it. In fact, my panel, the consensus on my panel where I had uh, a, a representative of A&E, Samsung Ads, Media Hub, and Amobi, so really all the pieces of the ecosystem there. And the, the consensus of our panel is we're in the second inning of the game here. Uh, those I said before, a couple of years ago, I was talking to Mike Bologna, and uh, at that point he said, well, we're still singing the national anthem. So at least we're in the game, the game has started, but we have a long way to go to get to the end of the game. But what's your sense of the issue? In other words, if you were talking to Mr. Bologna two years ago, it's taken quite a lot of time for the game to proceed. Well, that's only because that, that's kind of the digital person's perspective. You know, the, in, the, in the realm of the TV industry or the traditional TV industry, two years is like lightning fast. You know, in the digital world, that seems like it's taken forever. So just need to set the context there. Um, but it's, it's a huge change. I mean, you've got an industry that has basically 50 years of thinking in terms of age and gender audiences, very big, broad audiences, and has a very, very mature, well-developed infrastructure to support that. And from the advertiser perspective, they have a long history of benchmarks and knowledge about how that world works. So we're about to throw that out and move into a whole different world. And it just takes time to, first of all, get the infrastructure built up, then to gain the experience with then the processes within that infrastructure and then build up again that sort of benchmarks and that history. So on our panel, we were talking about a at least probably another three years of paralleling the traditional GRP Nielsen kind of metric with these new outcome-based metrics as people, you know, eventually sort of, you know, maybe not completely drop the old metrics because it, speaks to a certain part of the business of the marketing objective that is important but then you know to sort of change the balance and change the emphasis do we need to be realistic as an industry about how mass market attribution is going to become in the tv industry and uh, particularly i'm thinking about data driven attribution in which we can actively match an exposure to some sort of business outcome and, and my thinking here is that obviously there's a bewilderingly wide array of TV advertisers, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. They're running campaigns across literally hundreds of channels, streaming services, platforms, devices, multiple DMAs. It's a very complex landscape. And being able to deliver a, a, a one-size-fits-all attribution capability that works for all of those advertisers in all of those different areas all of the time feels very complex. Well, that's not even where we're going. We're going into a world where there will be multiple metrics for you know, different advertisers, or even for a single advertiser who may have different campaigns with different objectives you know, over time. Um, and I think, but to me that makes it even more complex, I think particularly for the media sellers, as they're trying to you know, optimize their revenue and optimize the, 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 the sales of their audience, where you're going to have all these different advertisers looking for different slices of audience, measuring it on different kinds of outcomes and different ways, and for them to have to balance that and you know, do their uh, 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 financial responsibility to their companies to make sure they're getting the best deals that they can, that's going to be very hard on them. Do, do you think as well there are risks, risks for TV, TV which is unsurpassed in its mass market reach yeah. still yeah. and in its powers as a brand building medium yeah. disappears down a performance tunnel that, that, w that is my biggest fear that you know TV will end up going down the direct response rat hole that digital did in 2000 2001 and has never gotten itself out of and if we do allow TV to go there we will be doing uh, the brands and uh, and ourselves a huge disservice. Now what we talked about in my panel is can we walk and chew gum at the same time? Can we balance metrics of you know, upper and lower funnel or brand and, and revenue and business outcome? Um, and I think, you know, I think we'll see 
some kind of, um, you know, like in the, in the management world, they talk about a balanced scorecard. You know, I think that's where we need to go. And then again, depending on your specific objective or specific campaign, you may weight upper funnel or lower funnel heavier, but you'll have both of those because, again, you know, TV is unique in its ability to build that brand, to build that connection, which is not necessarily going to pay off in the short term, but, you know, its, its big payoff is in the medium to longer term. And I guess the positive thing is that we will see potentially a more heterogeneous industry yeah. that can deliver against a wider array of marketing objectives with a Absolutely. far more diverse range of powerful tools at its disposal. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and I think the other positive is that in the past it's been so hard to quantify that financial impact of advertising. And so for the you know, financially minded in the management suite and in the C-suite, you know, they've always pushed back against spending more on, on television. So when they see more of that, I think they will be much more comfortable spending what they should spend uh, to optimize the, the performance for their brand. Um, and it's, you know, I, I think this is kind of David Ogilvy's dream come true. And I started my career at Ogilvy. And, you know, one of his uh, famous sayings was, you know, it's not good advertising unless the cash register rings, right? So now we're getting just better and better tools of tracking, well, whether it's the cash register, store traffic, web traffic, whatever that business outcome is, we're getting better tools to measure that, which I think, again, will just justify uh, the spending on, on television and video and, and make, again, the C-suite and the CFO uh, much, more, much stronger fans of this kind of advertising. Now, but one other big theme that's been very prevalent here at Ramp Up 2020 has been the transition to a cookie-less environment and the death of the cookie has been on yeah. everyone's lips as a topic. What's your sense of how the industry is going to manage this transition? Is it coping well and looking ahead? Or actually, do we have a couple of years of pondering and confusion and possibly even a little dose of chaos to worry, with, worry oh, about? Oh, there's undoubtedly going to be a period of chaos as we transition. I, I, I think the, the thing I'm most worried about is that they're a little too focused on the specific technical Im implementation of the cookie as opposed to what's the real issue here of consumers' attitudes toward advertising and consumers' attitudes toward the kind of you know, invasiveness and stalking uh, that they perceive uh, advertising has, has fallen into. You can do all these other uh, ways of data gathering and data usage that from the consumer standpoint will still look like they're being stalked. You know, if the consumer goes on a website in the afternoon and then that night gets served an ad for that brand and then when they, you know, go to their phone during the commercial break and they see that same ad on Facebook, they're going to still feel stalked whether we're using cookies or not. So there's a deeper issue of how we do this in a way that consumers feel respected, feel like, I don't know, that, that, that being... The, the privacy protection is really the thing consumers think about, but you know, feel like it's being done more for their benefit than for the advertising ecosystem. So this, so this is really about trust and consent and about making consumers aware of the value exchange. Absolutely. That, that in return for receiving more relevant ads, you will be able to use some of the most incredible services available for free. I think that's right. I think a big part of it is making that uh, uh, that value exchange much more explicit because it's been implicit you know for many many years I think people are vaguely aware that the reason they get to watch you know all these great TV shows for free and they're not paying you know 15 bucks like they do at the movie theater is because of the advertising but I think they kind of need to be reminded of that and I think in the digital world where people are used to much more control that they probably need to be given much more explicit control over that value exchange to the point where um, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all and it may be a very positive thing. I think we'll certainly see experimentation where people will be given the choice. You can pay us right now a dollar to watch this episode of this TV show or you can opt in for commercials and here's how many commercials you will be shown so it's completely transparent. Um, and people will be given that choice. 
but overall I sense you're an optimist. The clouds have a silver lining. Well, you know, that's the thing about this industry. There's so many smart, really dedicated people, uh, very creative people, um, that I, I have no question that we will get to a good solution in the end. But it's never a straight line. It's always a little bit chaotic for a while. A, you know, a lot of stuff gets thrown against the wall, but then ultimately we get to a point where you know, we find uh, a, a really positive solution.